Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna be sharing my statistics, as in my LSAT, my GPA, the letters of recommendations that I submitted to law schools, and also letting you know where I got accepted, rejected, and waitlisted, and their medians. So I'm gonna be very, very vulnerable with this video because I'm not a brainiac. I didn't study for the LSAT for months and months on end. I think I studied in total if I'm being realistic, like a month and a half to two months because I was working full time while sitting for the LSAT, which is not a good decision. If you have time to just take off from work and focus on the LSAT, then I 100% recommend that. But, okay, let's just jump right into the video. My GPA in undergrad was a 3.69, but LSAC reduced that to 3.65. As I've mentioned in the other video, everybody has to make an LSAC account and they kind of create a CAS profile or like a package that they send to law schools. And for some reason, when they recalculate your GPA, it can actually decrease. And I'm not sure what the actual reason for that is, but I'm not the only one that that's happened to. I know it's happens to a lot of people. It's really, really unfortunate because a lot of people work really hard to maintain a high GPA and then they look at their LSAC and, and then it says that their GPA has been decreased. So my LSAT was a 154. I know that's not the best score. However, I didn't take the LSAT as seriously as I'd hoped. And on top of that, on test day, I was really, really nervous. The nerves get to me during testing. I didn't perform well. I had the best setup I could have had, honestly. I filmed the day that I took my LSAT, so you can go look, but afterwards I was just kind of, I was just like, I honestly don't know how I did. It was a hard exam and the nerves really, really got to you. I submitted two letters of recommendations. I believe that that is the minimum and you can submit anywhere from like two to four or five. It really depends on the law school that you're applying to. I didn't get to create any other close relationships because I was only in undergrad for two years and one of those years I was fully online. There was basically a 0% chance that I was able to create a good relationship with a teacher that was genuine because it was all online. But the second year, which was my last year in undergrad, I was able to create a very, very close relationship with one professor because I was his research assistant. So I would go to every single office hour talk about my exams, figure out what I need to do. I got an A in that class. I did the most to not only get a good grade in his class, but also build a relationship with him. And I, I let him know at the very beginning as well that I wanted to apply to law schools and I was seeing if he was gonna be open to writing me a recommendation letter at the end of the year. And he basically said, yeah, he would love to, but it's not gonna come easy. I have to get a good grade in his class. And I also have to um, come by the office and like work on homework and stuff. Basically show that I was interested because they need material to write about. And I understood that so unfortunately I was so caught up with building that relationship with him and balancing like five or six classes at the time because I was trying to finish my degree quickly that I wasn't able to create the best relationship with any other professor. I mean I did go to office hours for other classes but it was never as tight knit out as it was with that professor and I'm done babbling about that but my second letter of recommendation was from my boss. I was a paralegal if you didn't know at a workers compensation firm. I didn't mention um, that I needed a letter of recommendation he actually offered because I had mentioned to him that I was going to law school. He's a very supportive boss so he offered to write me the letter and yeah so those were my two letters. I definitely think that maybe having a second letter of recommendation from a professor could have benefited me but I don't think that that's the case if it's going to be a weak letter. That's just a quick tip for you guys. Make sure that the letters that are going to be submitted are strong letters. Let's get into the schools that I actually applied to, my rejections, my waitlist, and my acceptances. Keep in mind that my stats are not the best, and I know that, and that's why I want to share this with you guys because I know that it's super realistic. And a lot of the times, if you go on Reddit and you go to law school admissions, you know, that thread you're gonna see everybody commenting about how they have a perfect LSAT score they have a 3.9 they're a minority just everything is basically working in their favor it just doesn't feel the best because 
it's very hard to get those scores, especially if you didn't know that you wanted to go to law school until, let's say, the end of your undergraduate career, and then it's like, well, you weren't focusing too much on raising that GPA, so then you have to focus on the LSAT, but what if your life circumstances aren't allowing you to put in that time, or, you know, it's expensive too. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that it's impossible. I know that if I had put in more effort, more time, more energy, I could have done better in both areas, but that's what I ended up with. Starting out with my waitlist, since that was the biggest category, I was waitlisted by GW and I ended up getting rejected by them. Their median scores were a 168 on the LSAT and a 3.84 GPA. So I'm very much below both medians. That just, it made sense. I was honestly surprised I was waitlisted. I was waitlisted by Columbia and I was later rejected. Columbia's median scores are 172 on the LSAT and a 3.84 on the GPA. So again, I'm underneath. Most of the schools that I applied to, I was underneath the median because you have to shoot your shot. You can't just, you know, if there's somewhere you really want to go to, shoot your shot. I'm a huge proponent of that because I feel like you never know if they're going to like something else on your application. The next waitlist I was on was FIU, which is in Florida. For those of you who don't know, I live in Florida. And I never received a response, but I did email them before I decided to go to law school that I'm attending now. And they basically told me that I was going to receive a response anytime up until August, so technically there still is time. But I'm just going to take that as a soft rejection. Their median LSAT was 158 and their median GPA was 3.72. Still, I was below their median scores. so makes sense. The next one is Stetson Law School, which I withdrew from their waitlist, but their medians were 158 and 3.51. So I was only above the GPA median, I believe. Yeah, I was above the GPA median. I was below the LSAT median. And I didn't really have any interest in going to Stetson because it's in Tampa. And I wasn't super interested in Stetson. I just wanted to use it as maybe a choice that I could have when deciding where I wanted to attend. The last school that I was waitlisted from was Emory Law School. And their medians are 168 on the LSAT and a 3.8 GPA. Again, very below their medians. I was also not interested in attending because I haven't heard the best things about that law school. I, I think... You know, I've read a lot about it on Reddit. I've just read that Emory's whole uh, group of people who are there to assist you in getting a job after law school aren't that good. That's just a rumor. I'm not sure if it's true, but either way, I didn't get accepted, so whatever. The rejections that I got without being waitlisted were Boston University and Harvard. Boston University wasn't really for me. I was just curious if I was going to get in. I wasn't too surprised by either of those because Boston's medians are 170 and a 3.84. It's worth a shot because you should always shoot your shot. You never know if they're going to want you. Their median was a 176 and their GPA was a 3.92. Very, very well underneath both of those. So now let's move on to acceptances, which there are only a handful and they're not that crazy good, but I'm still happy with the acceptances. I was accepted by Northeastern. Medians are 160. Wait, I don't think that's correct. Oh, okay. So their medians are a 163 on the LSAT and a 3.7 on the GPA, which actually are higher than mine, but I just wasn't interested in attending. There are a lot of competitive schools in that area, and I really want to land a somewhat good job, which I felt like at Northeastern I would have sort of a difficulty with. The next acceptance that I got was from Suffolk Law School, I think that's how you pronounce it, and the medians are 154 and a 3.49, so I was just kind of on the dot with the LSAT, but a little higher on the GPA. The next acceptance that I got was from Nova Law School here in Florida, and the medians are 153 and a 3.43, so that one was also a safety school. And the school that I will be attending is the University of Miami. I got a 160 on the, sorry, the medians are a 160 on the LSAT and median GPA is a 3.69. So yeah guys, those were my results. Um, after going over that, I think that if I had any advice for anyone out there, 
is take advantage of the diversity statement because I don't think that I actually wrote one, which I know is very bad, but I felt that I already showed as much as I could about my diversity and my background in my personal statement. Um, looking back at it, I wish I had written my diversity statement. I wish I had spent more time studying for the LSAT. I'm not mad at my GPA. Honestly, I really worked hard in undergrad, so I think I did the best that I could. And regarding the personal statement, I think that it's very important that you have multiple people read it over and make sure that it's good, it's proofread, because there's nothing worse than turning something in that you had months and probably a year to write and there's grammar mistakes. The last tip that I have is don't stress about it. Just remember that a lot of people online could be lying about their actual statistics and their results. A lot of these people who are posting are the ones who have great scores and like amazing GPA. Just keep in mind that the people who decide to post on YouTube are likely the people who had better outcomes and aren't embarrassed or scared to talk about their scores. And then the last thing is make sure you go on Law School Admissions on Reddit. Law School Admissions on Reddit has a lot of good advice for anyone out there who's studying for the LSAT. And everybody there is very, very friendly. There could be people there who are posting and lying about the scores that they receive. So don't be disheartened if you see that they're all 170s because that's probably what you're going to be seeing. Lastly, I just want to wish you guys all good luck and thank you so much for watching my video. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Have a great day and I hope you enjoyed the video.